With impressive W's over the Nuggets, Bucks, Lakers, and now Celtics, the Magic are number two in the East, 20% through the season. On the verge of clinching Group C to advance to the NBA Cup quarterfinals in Vegas, this success comes after years of disappointment. Following multiple failed rebuilds in the post Dwight Howard era in the 2010s, the Magic got back to the playoffs in 2019, only to get bounced by Toronto in round one. They made it back in 2020, but again lost in round one, this time to the Bucks. They've failed to make it back to the postseason since, but this time Orlando's rebuild is serious. Fifth pick from 2021, Jalen Suggs is finding his niche, rebounding stretch big off the bench, Mo Wagner's having his way with opposing second unit bigs, while top scoring threats being combo forward perimeter savvy freight trains, Paolo Boncaro and Franz Wagner, set a tone based around attack in the paint and dominating physically. This makes Orlando fun as hell to watch for Magic fans, but conversely distressing as hell to watch for opposing fan bases. The roster's collective size combined with gritty, prove em wrong, underdog edge in which their mentality is rooted in are foundational attributes any organization looking to turn the page requires. Stay tuned for how this young Orlando squad's broken out, but just 9.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're a Hoop fan, make sure you subscribe. It was the most hyped I'd seen an Orlando crowd since the 09 NBA Finals against Kobe, as Paolo Boncaro sealed the deal by putting Luke Cornett in a blender with a cross-tween cross momentum combo giving Orlando a 14-point cushion with just over five minutes left. However, the Orlando comeback win was fueled by an undeniably dominant 17-0 third quarter run. Orlando's liveliness collectively was outstanding, as their execution, body language, and desperate intensity quite frankly proved they wanted this in-season tournament matchup more than Boston. We'll get to the bench, but what's also unique about Orlando is there really isn't a clear-cut number one scoring threat, as 2021 and 22 lottery picks Franz Wagner and Paolo Caro are an interchangeable 1A, 1B in terms of who's the go-to guy. The Magic rely on their playbook, ball movement, and pushing of the pace to get it done. But in terms of the rest of the starting lineup, mid-season free agent pickup from last year, Gogo Batatse's displayed a springy high motor that's led him to a shocking team lead in blocks per game. Standing out in the first five-man unit even more so, however, has been Orlando's shooting guard. After a middle-of-the-pack first few campaigns to open his career for top five pick out of Gonzaga, Jalen Suggs, year three of the former Bulldogs' career has consisted of him nicely transitioning from the bench back into the starting lineup. Most notably, Jalen steadily morphed his archetype from pure shot creator like it was in his rookie year and parts of his second to now scrappy off-ball creating hustle beast. His pristine three-point shooting, willingness to spread the floor, high IQ movement, and fundamental yet quick switch ability to attack on the catch is currently generating a big portion of Orlando's offensive flow. In addition to posting career highs in field goal percentage, three-point percentage, free throw percentage, steals, rebounds, and points, Jalen's ninth in the association in total deflections, directly behind elite wings Shea Gilgis Alexander and Paul George. Also proving the engaged intensity from Suggs, the man ranks third across the association in defensive loose balls recovered. It's been really tough for opponents to counter the Orlando lead guards combo of locked in all out toughness and mechanically sound scoring chops. It also speaks to Jalen's elite intensity that he's ranked number five among all players in defensive rating. Good to see this man breaking out. One of the game's most dominant backup bigs at the moment, Mo Wagner, leads all front court players in total charges drawn, and among all players in that department, only trails Jalen Brunson. The gutsiness and positioning to lay his body out on the line is big time, but against Boston, I was impressed with Mo's leadership, generally how he connected the offense with that communication plus body language, in addition to what he provided with his skill set. It seems the Nikola Jokic eras opened the door for beastly rebounders who are capable of passing well enough to to execute their coach's system and also have the shooting chops to space the floor proficiently, Wagner's uniquely versatile in that aspect while also having an added bit of athletic force. Mo bounced around the league after being drafted 25th overall by the Lakers in 2018. Moved to Washington in LA's infamous trade to acquire Anthony Davis, Mo was then dealt in another three-team deal to Boston, only to be waived a few weeks later. 
after the Celtics let him go, the Magic picked him up almost immediately, and it's safe to say Moe's finally found a home in Orlando, given Magic general manager and former player for my Raptors and Anthony Parker drafted Moe's brother a few months after signing him. Against one of his former teams in the Celtics, Moe dropped a team-high 27 off the bench on Friday. Also off the pine, summer free agent pickup Jinglin' Joe Ingles is leading the team in plus-minus through 16 outings, having added the much lacking in prior years veteran experience and leadership while also fitting in with the scrappy demeanor of this team, fueled by 2023 ROI Paolo Boncaro, 2023 World Cup champion Franz Wagner, 6th man Cole Anthony, and head coach since 2021 Jamal Mosley. It's an inexperienced core that needed guidance, so netting the 36-year-old in Joe, who's in his 10th year of NBA service on a two-year $22 million deal, was meant to, and has, enhanced this team's aura. They're clearly a more mature, more team-oriented group than prior to the Ingles acquisition. You have to respect the sacrifice from the scoring prominent Cole Anthony to come off the bench given he mostly started games in his first few years. He's a high volume scorer, but the composure to knock down highly contested shots seems to have been worked on for 2020's 15th overall pick out of North Carolina. But again, it's Cole's understanding to accept a role off the pine, which has harmonized a theme of unselfishness 1-15. through 15. I warned the Celtics about Orlando in my last vid, but give credit to the Magic for shockingly making ball Boston fold in the final stages. Boston was dealing with a ton of adversity to be fair, missing Drew Holiday, while Derek White suffered a left forearm contusion after running into a screen. Jalen Brown's shot seemed off essentially all game, which happens, but when he's rushing shots by settling for looks away from the basket without attacking enough first, it hurts the Celtics a lot to say the least. To the Magic specifically, Boston's now lost four straight matchups, as Orlando's had their number over the past few years. That said, even considering the adversity Boston endured and brought upon themselves on Friday afternoon, the Magic deserve credit for dominating the best team in the NBA. They shot 15 less free throws than Boston, yet nearly won by 20. It was a great 17-minute defensive effort from Jonathan Isaac, who was tied for a game-high plus 17. While J.I. was drafted number 6 in 2017, to initially be a top player before suffering multiple career-altering injuries, the man transitioning into an energy guy who still gives you that elite reach advantage on the wing and high-octane rebounding up front makes the lethal Orlando recipe that developed when he was injured that much more venomous. The improved efficiency of Paolo Boncaro is a story for another video, but one specific stat being his 40 plus percent three-point stroke has been page-popping given the drastic improvement that mark is compared to his ROI campaign. Over the last few years, the NBA's quite frankly gotten bigger and more athletic, and Orlando follows that trend. The Magic have a high IQ team that doesn't settle for anything as they rank number 5 in the association in percentage of shots from 2 point range as opposed to ranking number 26 in percentage of shots taken from 3 point range. Meanwhile, the output of that volume puts them at number 5 among all teams in painted area points per game and down at number 28 in 3 pointers made per game. So Orlando's nicely carving their path in the evolving attack prominent NBA. In other news, a Brooklyn Nets loss to my Raps on Tuesday would clinch Group C for the fourth youngest team in the association, so after a World Cup win for Franz and Mo Wagner for Team Germany a few months ago, another bit of hardware in the form of an NBA Cup could very well be on the horizon for the brothers. Regardless, you have to give credit to GM Anthony Parker for blessing Orlando with a bright basketball future seemingly, and credit to coach Jamal Mosley and his staff for getting this culture moving in the right direction. But who deserves more credit on the magic in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments earns next video shout out, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Ultra Ape, whose score prediction was the closest I had given the Boston L, but appreciate every take, thanks for your support, Deep Flow signing off.